Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the differences between 1CNC XR5 and 1CNC XR6. So let's get started. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you all the differences because of time constraints, but I'll do the best I can to show you as much as possible. First of all, notice that 1CNC XR6 will install as a 64-bit application if you have a 64-bit Windows operating system. If you want to, you can force it install as a 32-bit application. And of course, if you're running Windows 32-bit, it'll install as 32-bit. The advantages of running a 64-bit application is that it's going to utilize more of your hardware, and that can translate into calculating your toolpaths quicker and things like that. The next thing to take a look at in regards to geometry, if we head over to the model tools, uh, within XR6, just like in XR5, you have the extract surface edges. But the difference with XR6 is that you can digitize multiple surfaces. In XR5, you can only digitize one surface at a time. Within XR6, I can come along here and I can digitize as many surfaces as I want, and one CNC will extract the edges on that. Let's take a look at another item. Let's take a look at trimming. If we were to just create a couple of lines here, there's a new option within 1CNC XR6 called Scissor Sketch. If we take a look at this, it's called Scissor Sketch. And what this does, it allows you to take your cursor and just drag it through the portion of the geometry that you want to get rid of. So that's a very nice tool within XR6. Something that's very, very nice with XR6 is the new file backup archive system. If we head up here to file, there's a new option called backup file archive. And what this does is this takes multiple snapshots at whatever time iteration you set up of the progression of the part, not only for geometry, but for manufacture. So if you had a power outage or something like that, you can actually load up any iteration of that part anywhere along its creation and its toolpath application. This is a huge difference between XR5 because with XR5, it would only take one snapshot of the part and that was it. So that's a neat new thing. That's the new file backup archive. All right, so let's take a look now at some differences within the toolpath. Now, again, I'm not going to be able to show you everything, but I'll do the best I can and try to keep this video under, let's say, 14 minutes. So let's first take a look at pocketing. This is a traditional pocket operation. I'm going to right hand mouse click and select edit. And the first thing you're going to notice within XR6 is there is a new option here called flute length. Now you have your overall length. That's the distance the tool sticks out of the holder. But you now have flute length. Now the reason why this is important within XR6 is that if you're making a pass and if you're cutting deeper than the actual flute length, then you can configure your simulator now to give you a warning and tell you that you're cutting too deep. You're, you're not cutting you're not cutting at the right depth. So this is brand new to XR6. And of course, the brand new XR6 mill tool library is going to support flute length as well. Another thing to notice is that with the XR6, we have dynamic dialog boxes. Notice that if you have a solid model on the screen, 1CNC is going to show you all of those solid models here within the dialog box. Then we have these dynamic clearance planes. So for example, the rapid plane, that's represented by the red grid. Uh, the plunge clearance, that's represented by these little black corners. The top of the parts are represented by kind of this gray looking grid. And then the actual depth is represented by the, uh, the uh, blue grid. So these are all dynamic. So as you change these, if I, for example, type in one inch, you'll see that red grid's going to hop up to one inch. Now, the advantage to having something like this is if I, for some reason, put in a Z depth that was incorrect, uh, let's say I put in something like, uh, how about minus 0.6, you'll see that the blue grid goes deeper, and I can see that it's pushing right through the part, and I can, I can catch that right away. And of course, the XR6 still has the uh, pick Z option where you can go in and, and digitize and of course, that grid and this depth here will update to that. So that's brand new. Let's head over to next. So we're going to take a look at traditional. Now notice that there's a new option here called lift between cuts on last depth. Now with traditional pocketing, you're making concentric passes. Now in XR5, 
when the tool made its concentric pass and as it was moving to the next concentric pass it would leave the tool down in the pocket and you'd get these diagonal scallop marks along the bottom of the pocket. Within XR6 you can use this option here called lift between cuts and what will happen now is the tool will move up and then it will ramp down to the next concentric pass which is going to give you a nicer finish. Now this lift between cuts on last step this is available in XR6 for both the traditional pocket as well as face machining. Okay so that's a, a very nice uh, thing that XR6 provides that XR5 is not going to. Also notice that I have a step over here of 95%. Now in earlier versions of 1CNC they recommended uh, about 65-70% as the max. Within XR6 you can go up to 95% engagement if you want to. And so if I were to simulate this, let's right hand mouse click and select simulate. We'll use stock model. I'm just going to simulate the pocket operation. You'll notice that as we push through here that there's absolutely no little islands that are sticking up inside there. There's no scallops or islands. It's a nice clean pocket and we use 95%. Now not to mention that we're also able to use multiple solid models within XR6 within the simulator which gives you a huge advantage in regards to things like tooling like clamps, cap screws, washers, and vice jaws, stops and things like that. We're going to talk more about simulator in just a second. I'm going to exit out. I want to show you XR5. So here's XR5. Here's exactly the same pocket operation. So if I go in here and select edit and if we take a look at the step over you'll see that this is indeed uh, traditional and if we look at step over uh, it's 95 percent. So if I were to simulate this within XR5 again there's only going to be one solid model but if I go ahead and click OK to that and we let this go through so at 95 percent using XR5 you're gonna to have to contend with these different islands uh, that are sticking up through there. Now another thing to take note of let's go ahead and shut this down let's go back into XR6 Another thing to take note of is that when performing traditional pocketing within XR6, XR6 is going to do the best it can to make just one entry point. So if we had multiple islands, still XR6 is going to do it best to make just one entry point and keep that tool down inside the pocket. Whereas in with the XR5, uh, the tool can tend to come out of the pocket a lot more. Another thing to take note of is that the open pocket machining within XR6 is a lot better and it's been enhanced. It can tackle more uh, aggressive geometry shapes than earlier versions of 1CNC. Next thing I want to take a look at, uh, we're going to skip over profile for just a second, but let's take a look at the hole wizard. Now notice that within this model I have holes that are at different Z levels. That's something that wasn't capable within hole wizard in earlier versions of 1CNC. But notice that within XR6 if we perform an edit here you'll notice if we click next there's an option here called use geometry for material top. So with XR6 using hole wizard you can now drill holes that are at multiple levels and of course this can be turned on and turned off. And so if I were to simulate this, let's just simulate the whole operation. Let's go to simulate. And again, we'll use that. And let's zoom in on this. So all of our spot drilling, exact same depth at multiple levels. And our drilling, I'm just using a peck operation. All of these holes are being drilled at minus 400 thousands, regardless of the level. So that's a powerful new feature within XR6. That's the multi-level hole wizard. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's take a look now at simulator, because I know we're running out of time on the video. Uh, let's take a look at... I'm going to just simulate all of the toolpath here. Okay, I'm going to pause this. So we talked about having multiple solid models. That's a huge advantage within XR6 within simulator. Uh, also notice there's something in here called backplot. So if we, we can turn this on and turn this off. This is very nice. And what this does is this shows you the actual toolpath. And that was only available within preview on earlier versions of 1CNC. So just like before, the green are the feed moves. Uh, the red are the rapid moves. If you ever see any blue, that's going to be a high feed rate. Okay. The other thing to take note of is that with an XR6, your time control now is available with the slider. So if you move the slider to the left, you can slow the toolpath down. Move the slider to the right, you can speed things up. So that's brand new with XR6. And you can still use 
uh, the uh, traditional old style way of controlling the speed with this option here but the slider is, is really the way to go on that. Another nice new thing within XR6 in Simulator uh, is this option here called Compare. Let me show you what this does. Let's rewind. Okay, so what this does is this actually shows you the cross-section of the original solid model. So if I move this down, here's the original solid model. And as we go into Simulator, this white outline represents that cross-section of the original solid model. And of course, you can dynamically drag this and so as you're performing your simulate, and which by the way, you can now step forward and you can also, uh, if you want to go to end or use turbo if you want to. But if we hit play on this, and let's speed this up just a little bit. Uh, and I've got the back plot on. Let's turn the back plot off on this. So as we're doing this, we can dynamically check that against the cross section of the original solid model. And that's new within XR6. So that's a really neat, a uh, new powerful feature as well. Uh, you also have the show tool and show holder. I believe this was the same in XR5. I may be wrong, but you have the ability to make it translucent, uh, disappear or off. And you can do the same with the holder, translucent, see through or back on again. And of course, you can show the uh, geometry. And if you want to, you can show the stock. Now, the stock's going to appear as this kind of looks like blue glass. And you can turn that on and off too. So there's a lot more versatility within the XR6 simulator. Now let's take a look at some of the powerful uh, detection options within XR6. Let's first take a look at the rapid collision. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go into our profile operation. Let's edit that. And I'm going to change my rapid to, instead of an inch, I'm going to make that just 200 thousandths. So I know that's going to rapid through my one of my cap screws. Okay, now let's go and let's just simulate just the profiling. And I'm going to turn on, actually I already have it turned on, this show rapid collision. So what's going to happen here is as this tool rapids from one position to another, it's going to hit that cap screw. Bang. But in XR6, it's going to give us a warning now, rapid collision detected. Now you would not want to ignore that. You'd want to go back and change your your uh, rapid value, your Z value there. But if you do ignore it and hit play, it'll go through, but you're going to see that it's going to leave the mark, the red on the actual cap screw. So that's brand new within XR6. That's the show rapid collision. Now let's, let's take a look at something else we can do here. I'm going to edit our profile again, and I'm going to put our rapid level back to an inch, but I'm going to change something else. Let's go back here. And let's change our flute length. I'm going to make the flute length something ridiculous. Maybe, uh, how about 250 thousandths? Okay, I'll click next on that. So that's definitely not enough flute length to profile this. So let's go back in here and profile. We're just going to simulate just the profile. And I have the show shank and holder collisions. And so what this is doing now is this is telling me that there's a collision detected, but this time it has to do with me not having enough flute length. And you can see the shank is going to actually rub against the, the stock there. So if I ignore that, which you wouldn't want to do, but if you ignore it, what this is going to do is this is going to paint blue on the geometry, the area where the shank is actually rubbing against the material there. So that's a really neat new feature within XR6, the ability to detect that flute length. Another thing that is possible with XR6 is also detect uh, collisions with the holder. And this is something new with XR6 and definitely not available within XR5. Let's demonstrate that. We're going to quickly go in here and edit this. And I realize this video is getting really long, so we're going to finish up on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the overall length uh, of the tool sticking out of the holder is only 300 thousandths. So we end up with something ridiculous like that. But this is going to demonstrate that one CNC can now also detect the holder. So again, let's just simulate the profile. And so here we go. We're coming down and bang. Now the first collision, that's just not enough flute length. Well, actually, I take that back. That first collision is actually the holder hitting our clamp. And so that's taking into account the holder. That's something you wouldn't want to ignore. But if you did, we'll push through there. And you can see now that just like before, the holder is now 
not only removing material but it's also painting blue on the part as well so this is a great advancement within the simulator within one CNC XR6 the rapid collision and also the shank and holder collisions this video is getting way too long there's lots more to show you within XR6 but those are some of the items that I could think of right off the bat okay hope that helps out thanks so much for watching I look forward to seeing you in the next video